Hi, welcome to Ms. Richardson's 5-Minute Lectures for U.S. History. This information will be U.S. Notes 1.21, Imperialism Definitions. It aligns with the fourth section of your study guide. Now remember, you control the lecture. Use your study guide to help you take the notes, but pause whenever you need and bring questions to class. Let's go ahead and get started. These notes are really just a series of definitions. These definitions will become very important to you as you learn about U.S. imperialism in the early 20th century. So the first definition you need to know is imperialism. So imperialism is a policy in which the country increases its influence and or power over another country or area. A country that goes out into the rest of the world and tries to take over other countries is known as imperialistic. However, a country may just be Trump may just try to influence the politics and decisions of another country without taking them over. That is still imperialism. Imperialism has four main causes. We're going to talk about each of these individually. The first, militarism or military reasons, are one cause of imperialism. Some countries have very advanced militaries and want to show the rest of the world. This desire to prove their military worth can lead to imperialism. Also, countries with large militaries, and therefore large navies, need ports and bases around the world for fuel and supplies. As countries spread out more around the world, they need to imperialize other countries for their own military needs. The next cause of imperialism is nationalism. Nationalism refers to excessive pride in one's own country. A nationalistic person believes that their country is the best, always. In order for a country to prove to others that they are the best, they compete with the others for land, resources, and power. This leads to imperialism. The third cause of imperialism is economics. Industrial nations need resources and markets in order to power their industries and sell their goods. These resources can be found in other countries, and in order to gain access to these resources, nations will practice imperialism, either by taking over the area in question or creating influence to gain the best possible results for trade between the two countries. The final cause of imperialism is humanitarianism. Humanitarian causes are based on the belief that the imperializing nation has better medicine, religion, government, society, and those types of ideas than the other country. The country that is taking over believes they are helping the other country to progress. Officials, doctors, missionaries, and others all use humanitarian arguments for their involvement in other areas. They are working to spread the benefits of technology, medicine, democracy, and religion to the less educated and the less fortunate members of the world. Another term you will need to know is alliance. An alliance is an agreement or a friendship between two or more countries. Alliances may be a result of imperialism, but they are not a cause of imperialism. The U.S. did practice imperialism in the early 20th century. Their reasons included economics, security or military reasons, and nationalism. While many Americans did not desire to conquer other lands, they did support economic reasons for imperialism. What they soon discovered, however, was that the economic involvement in other countries leads to political and military involvement in those same countries. Examples of American imperialism at this time include things like the Spanish-American War, the annexation of Hawaii, the open door policy with China, the building of the Panama Canal, Samoa, and the Roosevelt Corollary to the Monroe Doctrine. I'll go over some of these in more depth later, and we'll also look at these in class. Two final definitions for the notes are interventionism and isolationism. Both of these describe foreign policies during the Gilded Age and Progressive Era. First, isolationism. This is the policy of staying isolated or not getting involved in the affairs of other countries. When a country practices isolationism, they do not have many interactions with other countries. Interventionism is the opposite of this. 
When a country is interventionist, it intervenes or gets involved with the affairs and issues in other countries. During the Progressive Era, most foreign policy was interventionist in the U.S. Following the Progressive Era, America went to a more isolationist policy. So this is the end of note, U.S. Notes 1.21. I hope you learned something from the lecture, and I will see you in class with any questions that you have.